kabocha squash is hands down one of the most delicious vegetables I've ever eaten. It's a Japanese winter squash, also known as Japanese pumpkin. It's commonly used in Japan, Korea, and Thailand, and gaining popularity here in the US. You may have seen kabocha squash at the grocery store and wondered, what do I do with this? It's often used for roasting, adding to soups and curries, and you can even make a great pie out of it. So what does kabocha squash taste like? It's really sweet and has a slightly dry, dense texture, kind of similar to like a sweet potato or chestnuts. How is kabocha squash different than a butternut squash, you might be wondering? Butternut squash has a long neck, whereas you can see that this kabocha squash is shaped more like a squat pumpkin. Butternut squash has orange skin, but a kabocha squash is dark green on the outside. I find the texture of butternut squash is a little bit more tender and moist compared to the drier texture of a kabocha squash. The other difference between a butternut squash and a kabocha squash is the sweetness level. Kabocha squash is going to be way sweeter. Can you eat this dark green skin on a kabocha squash? Yes, but depending on the recipe you're preparing, if you want a uniform orange color like a pureed soup or something, then you might want to remove this dark green skin. You might also be wondering if kabocha squash is the same as a pumpkin. While it's similar to pumpkin, it's definitely sweeter. To choose a fully ripened kabocha squash, you're gonna wanna look for one with a hard skin and a hard, dry, corky stem. If the stem isn't dry, that means it hasn't fully matured. Unlike other fruits and vegetables, we're not going for freshness with a kabocha squash. Kabocha squash actually reaches peak ripeness a couple of months after it's harvested. Nutritionally, kabocha squash is a good source of beta carotene, which you can see in the orange flesh inside. It also provides iron, vitamin C, as well as potassium. There's even a small amount of calcium, folic acid, and a little bit of B vitamins. To cut a kabocha squash, you're gonna want a good sharp stainless steel knife like this. Whatever you do, don't use a ceramic knife. The squash is so dense, it will possibly snap your blade in half. Today I'm gonna to show you a delicious soup that you can make using kabocha squash. If you're someone like me with a sweet tooth, this is a great way to satisfy cravings for dessert. Eating complex carbohydrates like kabocha squash helps to curb sugar cravings. Some people like to microwave their kabocha squash for a minute to soften it. I'm not a big microwave person, so I'm gonna skip that. Just go with my sharp knife. You wanna get a good grip on your squash. Use a rocking motion to get that first cut. And then I spin it around and I go on the other side. And then I kind of lift it on its side. Just be careful, you know, because you have like a rounded side here balancing on the board, but you just want your two cuts to meet. And at a certain point, you're just gonna be able to um, basically break it open, kind of split it apart. All right, and there we go. Now, as you can see, there are lots of seeds in there. We're gonna scoop those out with a spoon. There we go, all cleaned out. And if you like, you can actually use these seeds uh, to roast. They're edible, just like pumpkin seeds. Now, if you see any little funny spots like this, where maybe it got bumped or broken or something like that, you can always shave that off. And then you can just go ahead and make some cuts into here. And again, you'll want to use that rocking motion. These kinds of pieces are perfect for roasting if you decide that you want to roast your kabocha squash. But in this case, I'm going to cut them even smaller for our soup. If you did want to peel your squash, rather than using a vegetable peeler, I like to just use my knife. So I just carefully take my knife and just use that to remove the green skin.
Now I'm gonna layer all my ingredients for the soup in a nice heavy soup pot. One cup of leeks, one cup of chopped celery, two carrots sliced, one and a half cups of our diced kabocha squash, one and a half cups of cooked chickpeas, one teaspoon of dried thyme, and then we're gonna add four cups of vegetable broth. That might have been more like three cups, so let's just say three to four cups of vegetable broth. Bring the soup up to boil over medium-high heat. Once it's boiling, you can cover it and reduce the heat to simmer on low for about 20 minutes. The soup's been cooking for 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna add some escarole. This is a nice tender green and it wilts down beautifully in the soup. I've got three cups of coarsely chopped escarole. Trust me, all these greens are gonna wilt down. We're gonna cover this and cook it for another five minutes. Dying to try this. It smells so good. There's a nice little bite of kabocha squash right there. Mmm. The great thing about a soup like this is you can add other seasonings that you like, like curry powder or Italian seasonings. Let me show you how easy it is to roast kabocha squash. Take all these pieces and place them on a lined baking sheet. This has parchment paper on it. Then we're gonna drizzle them with about two tablespoons of olive oil. And then we're gonna sprinkle them evenly with some sea salt. By the way, instead of using olive oil, if you prefer, you can use some ghee or coconut oil, or even avocado oil. Some cracked pepper. And of course, you can add any seasonings you like. Some people like to add cinnamon. Roast them in a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. Now I didn't flip these halfway through, but you can do that. So 15 minutes into the roasting, feel free to turn them over and then roast them for the remaining 15 minutes. These are its sweetest candy. They go great over a salad or just as a side dish to any meal and <laughs> they're even good just for snacking. Mmm, it doesn't even need a dressing, but feel free to serve with your favorite dressing if you like. Thanks for watching today's video all about kabocha squash. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell to find out about new videos when they come out. I'll see you the next time.